So I'm, I'm, I would like to talk in English because we have uh, an, uh, our guest here that speaks English. So uh, I'm glad to be here today to another event in our course. And uh, we are receiving Martin, that is the vice president of uh, Rodan Partners, and Philip, that is uh, our main partner to our, to our dual course. So uh, I would like to pass the uh, word to Philip. Uh, but before I pass the word to Philip, I would like to tell you that I'm very glad to be here with you. I know that we are online yet, and uh, we are planning to come back to the university on uh, March. But I know that you are already starting, and uh, you have access to the classes, and I'm uh, having very good feedbacks from the professors, and I'm glad for that. And so uh, this is another event that we are uh, receiving, our partners, and so I would like to pass to our partner, uh, Philip, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> so let me try to get this a bit up here for Martin also. Can you hear me? Everything? Boa tarde a todos. As I told you, né, from now on, you are part of an uh, elite program, so everything in English. Yeah? I know that most of you are ready for this, yeah, and uh, for this challenge, but some of you will grow into it fast. So I would like just to introduce to you who you will talk to now. Martin, like I will be for you, was my mentor. Yeah? He was uh, trained by Bernd Rödel. He was assistant coming from Deloitte, from Big Four to Rödel and Partner. In the very beginning, when Rödel and Partner was very small, he would tell you, very small, three offices only, yeah? a couple of hundred people. Now we are a big firm, yeah? and he was the main driver to make it that big. Yeah? And he was mentoring me. I remember well when I was coming to Nuremberg and to the headquarters. Yeah? Uh, and he was just moving to another office with a lot of cabling guys running around and I gave a pre presentation and probably he saw with me what I see to you, a uh, big potential. Yeah? I had no clue about nothing, not, no clue about accounting, yeah? but I wanted to learn it and I had a great coach. Yeah? So mm -hmm. now you meet my coach, Martin Wambach. <laughs> yeah, bom dia. <laughs> That's it with my Portuguese, so sorry, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Yeah, I'm very happy um, to be in front of you. Um, Thomas and Philip presented me the idea for this program, I would say about three and a half years ago. It was a rough outline of a very ambitious idea yeah, to realize over here in Brazil, in Sao Paulo, the same thing which we did also in our headquarters in Nuremberg in the late 90s and then afterwards in lots of <clears throat> other cities throughout the world. And the idea was to interconnect as directly as possible to young talents. Yeah, and the best way to connect to young talents is obviously to have a good relationship and probably to share a program with a very prominent university. Yeah, and when they outlined the program, the idea here to build a course together with Mackenzie, <clears throat> I was very much fascinated. Yeah, as much fascinated as Philip and Thomas were. Uh, and from the very beginning, even it was not easy, as you can imagine. Yeah, it's not that easy to build such a program. Now, where it's, when it's there, you know, it looks easy, but really to, to build it up, to have the academic approach, yeah, to have the challenge, yeah, to really build something from which you can benefit a lifetime, you know? It's not fun what we are doing here together, you know that, yeah? You invest a lot of time, you invest your, your ideas, you invest your energy, yeah? You have dreams, which probably should come uh, true. And um, we had a great support from McKenzie, and I think we are a great team, yeah, together with the other business uh, partners, and so it's a great day for us, and for me especially, yeah, to see that the program was realized 
and that we have the first yeah, real students here sitting in the auditorium. And it's great that you came personally. Yeah, we are very much used to video sessions in the meantime since Corona, but nothing, nothing can substitute a real personal meeting. So really a big, big thank you from my side to you that you took time yeah, and came here personally yeah, to share yeah, this afternoon together. And my job here is actually yeah, very simple. Yeah, I just have to spread the motivation I ever had yeah, to deal with accounting, to learn that stuff which seems to be boring in the first step, but it's really challenging and building a great fundamental basis for a really top, top professional career. Yeah, and he's a symbol for that way that worked. Yeah, Thomas is a symbol, I'm a symbol for that, so I have a three, at least three role models yeah, that accounting seems to be boring, but seems to open great perspectives. Yeah, and if this is the, the content, the message you take with you back home, yeah, I think then we have done a good job. Okay. Um, we prepared a little agenda. Yeah, uh, I think I have about 45 minutes in total. Yeah, so the first 35 already gone. You know, um, but we'll make it, don't worry. So. So, um, who I am? Yeah, I'm a dinosaur. Yeah? So, whenever I see this yeah, on the screen, that at the 1st of July this year I will be 30 years in profession, it sounds really weird. And when people ask me, do you have kids? And I say yes too, and they're 27 and 29 years old, that doesn't make things better, you know? Um, on the one hand, it's great. On the other hand, I don't feel that old as it looks like. Yeah? Um, but that's the way it is. At least I can say I have a lot of um, experience you know, gained in my more than 30 years of professional practice. Yeah, and <clears throat> I'm coming from a, from a town called Nuremberg. Yeah, I never know whether you ever <clears throat> checked um, Google Maps or whatever where Nuremberg lies. Yeah, it's in the southern parts of Germany, about 100 miles north of Munich. Yeah, at least the, the boys who are interested in football probably know Bayern Munich. Yeah, it's a pretty famous football club. Yeah, and 100 miles north of, uh, of Munich, there's Nuremberg, a, a town which is really tiny compared to Sao Paulo. Yeah? Also, Nuremberg has 500,000 inhabitants and is the second largest city in Bavaria. Yeah? So Germany is different yeah, than Sao Paulo. And I grew up there <coughs> and I'm married with Patricia, my wife. We have two kids, and um, yeah, I, uh, I was on university studying accounting, um, auditing, tax, and IT in the early 80s. Then I spent one year in America as an exchange student, which really broadened my view a lot. Yeah, and I always wanted to move to the US. Yeah, uh, for some reasons this doesn't didn't work. So, but I spent a lot of time abroad, out of Germany, and I'm always very happy especially when I'm over here in Brazil because it's one of the countries in the world, you know, uh, with really a young population, you know, when you're uh, living in Europe, yeah, it's a fascinating continent, but it's really old, yeah, Europe is really old, yeah, and Brazil is a young country, you feel it from the very first second, yeah, you're landing at the airport, you see the people, yeah, it's just energetic, it's, it's diverse, yeah, 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 lots of people, different colors, smells, power, yeah, so I always enjoy being in Brazil in this yeah, melting pot Sao Paulo, yeah, so um, I came to Rödel & Partner, as Philip said, um, when I have been working a couple of years with Deloitte, great company, I experienced a lot of great things there, yeah, but one day I met Bernd Rödel, and Bernd Rödel was the founder of Rödel & Partner, and at that time, Rudel and Partner had three offices in Germany and about 180 people. A really a small firm compared to that, what we are right now with about almost 6,000 people with offices in 40 countries. Yeah, uh, and uh, the GPSA or, or Professional Services Alliance with another about 50 countries throughout the world with which we deliver our professional services to our clients. Yeah, and what made me going to 
Rödel and partner are joining Bernd Rödel. It, it was his vision. Yeah, he was a real entrepreneur and he combined two, two charact characteristics. Yeah, the one was that he was a really very professional um, CPA, tax advisor and lawyer. So he had all three professions, very professional. Yeah, and on the other hand, he was a great businessman with a clear vision. And he said, Martin, yeah, the, the difference between the big four, how we tell them today, you know, Deloitte, PwC, KPMG, and EY, and Rödel and Partner is, is only a, a little thing, but it's very important. The big four are great professional service firm, services firms. Yeah, technically, they're very professional, they have profound services, they have super people, everything top. We have the same at Rödel and Partner, super people, top professional, but what comes on the top is this entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah? Understanding our profession, not only as a profession, but also as a business. Yeah? To try to deliver the best services to our clients, not thinking in problems, but thinking in solutions, and be part of the success of our clients. And this is the simple magic key uh, factor of the success of Rödel and Partner, uh, being very close with professional services to our clients, to have the energy, to have the drive, to be part of the business of our clients and to help them and to promote them to be successful. Because when the clients are successful, we will be also successful. Yeah, and the big trend we used as Rödel and Partner was going global. Yeah, the German business went international. And then they needed to have people who tell them, you know, hey, when you go to Brazil, it's not that easy. Yeah? It's a bureaucratic country, yeah? like Germany. It's why we fit together very well, you know. So you have to be very careful using the, the, the real, let's say, tricks and knowledge to be compliant with tax regulations with accounting regulation, with labor law and all that stuff, yeah, that you have your head free for the real business because all, the, because all this compliance stuff is managed by us. And it's very important, yeah, because when, I wanna, when you want to be successful on a, on a long-term range, sustainable successful, you have to be compliant. Yeah, business is for serious people. Business is not for fooling around. Otherwise, you won't be successful for a long time. So compliance... It's very important, it's getting even more important. This is already one factor, why it's so important yeah, that you learn it from the very scratch what accounting means. Because accounting is, in the end, nothing else than reflecting business um, transactions. Every business transaction is kind of recorded, whether it's you know, digital or manual, yeah, and, and, and the bookings and the accounts, whatever, but it's reflecting business. So the basic of every business is on the one hand the business model, how you make money, but also you know how to, how to document what's going on and then fulfill compliance matters. That can be tax matters, that can be commercial matters, that can be labor law matters, whatever. Social security, yeah, natural, or as we have right now, ESG, yeah, env environmental social governance criteria. But it's all about compliance. It's all about accounting. And you know how important it is yeah, that accounting has developed very fast now from only financial accounting into environmental accounting, into social accounting. Where's the data coming from? How do we gather the data? How we uh, put the data together to reports? And how do we gain credibility and, you know, uh, and uh, responsibility for the reports? So that they probably will be audited, yeah, that the public can trust in what we deliver. Yeah, and that idea, or at that time, yeah, helping clients who want to go international to help them to fulfill their compliance requirements, that was the idea of Van Rödel. And this vision brought me to this company. And we were driving it really like hell. And it was fascinating every day, really. So I'm a German CPA 
Yeah, I started, as I said, economics uh, and IT and other things uh, at university. I'm also a tax consultant and IT auditor, yeah, because IT is really very relevant, as you know, and getting more relevant. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a member of the board of German CPAs. Yeah, we only have four members there in Germany. I'm one of the members. Um, I'm the deputy chairman of another institution dealing with public accounting and auditing in Germany. And I'm a member of the board of the Latin America Association in Germany uh, because of my business over here in, in Brazil and with, thank you with the GPSA yeah, in Chile, Argentina, Colombia, Peru, and other countries. So daily life is really a challenge. Yeah? It's, it's, you wake up, you have a plan, and after one hour you know the plan is gone. Yeah? You have to make a new plan. <laughs> okay. A brief introduction to Rödel and Partner, I already did, yeah. In the end, it's easy, yeah. We are auditors, we are tax advisors, we are lawyers, we are IT and business consultants, yeah. It's a business, yeah. We see us as a business, not only as professionals, yeah. Um, our DNA is that we are businessmen, yeah, and that makes it very, very interesting in, you know, in, in your daily life, yeah. Not, dealing, or not only dealing with, uh, let's say, the substantial... Um, let's say, professional matters of real accounting, of real auditing and the problems uh, related to that, but also, you know, to try to be successful and also to be a business firm and thinking like our clients do. Yeah, um, we are very much interdisciplinary. It's very interesting yeah, because you get to know every day new things, yeah, meeting our own lawyers and our own other colleagues, yeah, dealing with specific specializations. Yeah, you see the revenues, it's about 405 million yeah, uh, last year, 2020. So 21, it's going to be about 450 million as I see the figures. And this year we will hit about 500 million revenues on a global scale. Yeah, um, very important is that everybody who is working for Rulam Partners is feeling as a brand ambassador for the firm, reflecting the values. And our core value is... Um, Reliability, fairness, uh, to be fair to each other, to value everybody, to have a, an, how I say, an attitude of partnership with everybody, to be fair, to be honest, and to be reliable. Those are our core values yeah, which really drive us our daily business. We don't <coughs> cheat people, yeah, we don't tricks, yeah, we don't use tricks. We don't do stupid um, and aggressive tax planning. Yeah, that's for other people. Yeah, we are dealing with real, serious, sustainable business. Yeah, and um, what brings us to the to the speech today is the importance of digitization yeah, and that um, digital maturity is a key success factor for the future. And so I want to give you a short insight uh, what's going on within Rödel and Partner. So when young people ask me, Martin, hey, what is your profession? Uh, I used to say I'm a Wirtschaftsprüfer. That's the German word for CPA. And then young people looked at me and they didn't know what a Wirtschaftsprüfer is. Because it's a profession, it's only about 14,000 people in Germany yeah, carrying this title. So many people in the public or friends, even my family, yeah, did not know what a Wirtschaftsprüfer is. And the funny thing is, you know, the, the, the first part of the word Wirtschaft means, in, in, translated in German, um, inn or restaurant or something like this. So my kids thought for a very long time, I'm a restaurant tester. Yeah, so, but they didn't know what accounting is. Yeah, so. Um, Nowadays, I learned a lot. I, I never say I'm a Wirtschaftsprüfer. I tell them I'm a specialist in data and in processes. And this is cool. As to be a specialist in data and processes sounds much more promising and challenging than telling them I'm a Wirtschaftsprüfer and they, know what it, they don't know what it is. So whenever you will be asked, yeah, what, what are you doing? Certainly, you can tell the people you are studying accounting, but probably I don't know what your experience is. Many people don't know what accounting is. Yeah? Or they say it's boring. Tell them you're a specialist in data and processes and you're cool. Really, try it. 
And that's true. We are specialists with regards to data, economic data, financial data, tax data, yeah, environmental sustainable data, whatever. We know how to collect, how to put together, how to report, how to audit data, yeah, and we put an added value on it, yeah, on this data and process knowledge by saying, hey, we also have tax know-how, we have audit know-how, we have accounting know-how, we have digital know-how. And this is actually how I look at profession, at the profession, and what you are studying. So that's already the first, I think, important message. What you are studying has a real future. Whenever you see reports yeah, that accountants will be, um, will be useless because of digitalization, no. You won't be useless. Not at all. The opposite is the case, and it's true. We need people who understand what processes and data are. It's, it's an intellectual capacity, and then you know to build the real systems to deal with those data and to put them together and make them reliable. So whenever somebody says, hey, this is boring, this has no future, you have the answer. So it's, and you're, it's good that you're right here and you believe in that and we're sharing those ideas. So the next thing is, now we know who we are. But what is, digi what is digitization? Um, I'm very often giving this speech, uh, part of this speech, you know, when we welcome our new colleagues in Germany and to give them a little impression, who is Rödel and Partner, how are you be working, what is important, and I ask them, what is digitization? So if I would ask you, please give me in one sentence, one sentence, give me a hint, explain to me what is digitization. Are you possible to do that? Who wants to try it? You cannot be wrong. Don't worry. It's, it's, I don't want to challenge you, you know, to, to make you feel bad. I want to, to challenge you to make you feel good, yeah? because probably everything you say is right. You cannot be wrong because digitization is almost everything, you know. But how, how to try to condense it in one sentence? Because most people don't want to have a lecture from you yeah, when they ask you what's digitization, and you say, you take, let's say, 10 or 20 minutes to explain what it is. Okay, super. Mama, when we take the micro, Philip. Philip is assisting me. <laughs> the uh, may I sit. <laughs> uh, the right word is digitalization, right? Yeah. Uh, I believe that digitalization will be the evolution of uh, data, data okay. process. Uh, how we're gonna manage the the tools we are going to use uh, in our daily basis, like uh, since powering a computer on, till you have your total and uh, and complete dealing with your. Uh, with your, uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's complicated because we we are in touch with a lot of programs uh, like Microsoft Teams, uh, yep. chats online, but we are never uh, uh, personally saying this. So it's uh, it's astonishing at the same time because. <laughs> Uh, dealing with technology, uh, you have to be really careful, really prepared. Uh, I, I mean, uh, since uh, you are practicing or studying it. So it's important that the future uh, is going to be pretty much faster coming, arriving pretty much faster than we, than we know. And it's really important to know what you're dealing with and for what you're negotiation for so there are lots of <sighs> virus coming from the internet and you have to know what you're 
to your but face. But you see, now. I don't want to break under. I don't want to break up your speech. Super. Thank you for standing up. Yeah. But you see <laughs> how broad the picture of digitalization is. You know, you have so many things in mind, yeah, and you can tell so many things about it. But it was a pretty long sentence. <laughs> it was super, and everything what you said is right. Everything. So thank you, really. But you Martin. See, just to add here, uh, Gabriel, who was talking, you know, when he came in the, uh, during his presentation, he reminded me about myself when I was young, a small, <laughs> tall, slim guy, and he talks a lot like me. <laughs> very good, very nice. Yeah, yeah super. But you see, um, you can tell a lot of things, yeah, but now we have to, tr we have to, 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 to um, condense it, you know, if it's possible in one sentence. And that, not as the lawyers, you know, when a lawyer makes one sentence, that means, you know, a page of paper is full with words. So we tried as businessmen to put it in a short sentence. Okay, shall we try it? Okay, here's the next one. <laughs> test, test. Yeah, works. Please. I think it means connection, either data connection or people connection. Super. That's Quite it. radical. You know, you don't, you don't concentrate on the technical aspect. You, 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 you concentrate on something what digitization does to connect. Great. It's also true. It's super. One sentence, very short. Digitization is about connections. It's, it's right. So almost everything we try, you know, to, to, to condense is, is okay. So I give you one explanation, yeah, which helps us to get a kind of orientation, yeah, and which is uh, also right. So we say, at least the sentence we try to build is, digitization is about seven megatrends changing our life. That's the simple sentence. Digitization is about seven megatrends changing our life. Our private life, our business life, life of people in general. Something is changing. And the driver is digitization. Now it's getting interesting. What are the seven megatrends? Let's try to get them together. What do you think is, is a mega trend of digitization? How could we differentiate them? Well, now the Rödel students have a little advantage because they, they have been coached by Cristiano and myself. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's put the Rödel student out for the scope. So everybody not a Rödel student is now challenged by Martin. Yeah? To, what are the seven mega trends? We have a little hint. Martin, if you could uh, go two slides more, I think. One more. Shall I put it on the slide? Yeah, maybe. Okay, I, I put it on the slide, okay? No, but it's, it's an empty slide. It's an empty slide. Ah, so. If, if you go, well, uh, this is done, this exercise. Yeah, yeah stop. Okay. stop. There, yeah. There's some, so some you pictures. An, you have a little picture, picture which helps you. <laughs> <laughs> so, who wants to try? One trend. So which one? There are two twins. One is in our program, one is with KPMG. Which one is with us <laughs> for twins? Okay. So. Mobile. Super. Mobile is one trend. Cloud. Cloud? Yes. Super. Big data. Yes. Great. Three out of seven you already collected. Now it's getting more difficult. <laughs> Blockchain. Blockchain. Super. Excellent. Correct. Okay, that's four out of seven. VR. What was that? Uh, virtual re uh, VR. Virtual reality, ah, she said. Okay, yes. We, we, we name it artificial intelligence and machine learning, that's but I, we mean the same. Okay, thank Super. you, thank you. Five okay, out next of one, so I'm jumping here. We already have five. Social medias. Yes, social media, six. Fantastic. So... And the last one? One more lady here, maybe. Who was? The professor. Who was? <laughs> so, what's the seventh trend? I can show you the picture. It's, it's this one. It's not the gear shift of a car. <laughs> uh, wait, 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 wait. We have it, we have it. IoT. 
Yes. Internet of Things. Always on IoT. Everything is connected, as you said. Everything is connected to everything. Always on Internet of Things. So here we have the seven trends. Mobile, yeah? IoT, always on, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, blockchain, cloud, social media, and um, big data, um, big data computing, yes. Those are the seven mega trends. Martin, can you share your view on each of these uh, trends for us, please? Okay, but we have to have our watch a little bit in view. Okay, no, everybody know, knows mobile, yeah? If we think yeah, that this, in this case it's an iPhone, is just 13 years old, one of the girlfriends of our daughter, her father was a, a pretty prominent manager at Deutsche Telekom, yeah? the German mobile company. And he showed me about 13 years or 14 years ago the first iPhone. And I had at that time a Blackberry. You don't know what that is, a Blackberry. Yeah? I, I'm sure you don't know it. But he showed me the first iPhone, which was a little bit smaller. And he gave it to me. And I looked at it and said, it's not fascinating for me. Yeah, the, 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 you know, the, here, how you say, the keyboard is so small and everything. So the, the Blackberry had a bigger keyboard and something like this. Yeah? I was not so much fixed about it. Yeah? You see how wrong I was. It's a super microcomputer nowadays, yeah? And it will be even smaller and more powerful in the future. And we are used to work 24-7 with virtual um, here lessons and everything. You're sitting in front of your notebook. You can do it from back home, from the house of your grandparents, whatever. So mobile. IoT always on, yeah? That's, you know, you can change, uh, uh, sorry, you can check weather stations throughout the world. We have telematic programs, you know, for just-in-time delivery, yeah, that trucks, yeah, uh, see traffic jams, see bad weather ahead, yeah, can rearrange the routing yeah, that they deliver the goods right in time. Yeah, and this will be a very fast growing trend, IoT always on, because everything what can be measured, yeah, who, has, who of you has a smartphone? Right? <laughs> Almost everybody has a smartphone, it's IoT. Yeah, you measure your, your heartbeat, you measure the routes when you go jogging, yeah, you measure your altimeters, whatever, yeah? it's crazy. That's IoT, yeah? Artificial intelligence, machine learning is very important for us as accountants and auditors, you know, because we can use the data and the processes, you know, to, to find, uh, let's say, certain um, pictures in there, certain truth, you know, by using algorithms and, and other stuff. But look at Amazon and the other ones, they know more from you only analyzing, you know, where you walk around, what you're ordering, so they know exactly what your character is. Are you a more sportive lady or more a guy interested in restaurants and traveling or whatever? Yeah. Blockchain, it's not only about the cryptocurrencies, yeah, which everybody knows in the meantime, yeah, Bitcoin, other ones, Ethereum, but it's also about the new systems to uh, make archives, yeah, uh, and to make data uh, much more resistant against manipulation. So blockchain will be really a very important uh, trend in the future. Cloud computing, this all only works with big computing capacities, yeah, which a notebook cannot fulfill. So we have those big data centers which we can reach by cloud connections. Yeah. Um, social, oh no, in Brazil, certainly everybody knows social media. Yeah. Sometimes you're dealing more with social media than studying. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it around. Take more time for studying than for social media, but it's an important factor, certainly, social media. Yeah? And big data means yeah, that we can process a lot of data in the same time, yeah, and we don't have to wait overnight until we get the analysis or get the reports done or whatever. The funny thing is, you know, you're very young. Yeah? Many of this, of this stuff, what I, ca what I tell you, is for you, for you very normal. Yeah, when I grew up, yeah, even when I was, there was no iPhone, there was no big data computing. Yeah? We had to wait sometimes for one or two days to get reports done with our computers. Things you cannot understand today because it's just normal, you know? That's how things go on yeah, and, and develop. 
So for us, those seven trends are very important to understand as Rödel and Partner because they are important for our clients, they are important for our life, and this is how we have to deal with them, you know. And certainly we have a digital agenda for transforming Rödel and Partner, and we have five relevant drivers, you know, around our digital agenda, which will change the whole company. But you see, on top, it's always the digital customer experience. So we never digitize something which does not bring benefit to our clients. And very often when I come to companies and ask them, hey, why are you dealing with this topic? Yeah? Why is this important? Where is the where's the relevance for, for the customers? They cannot explain. But, but it's stupid, you know. Why should I deal with digitization in some field or aspect when it does not bring any benefit? And the benefit we have to create is, is to make our customers more happy. Yeah, so customer experience is very important. Yeah? And then we have the five uh, uh, drivers around it. It means uh, cloud is very important. So everything we do has to be cloud capable. Mobility, it has to support mobility, but also security, a very important point. Yeah? Networking, that means we want to collaborate with our colleagues, but with our clients all over the world, from office to office, from team to team, throughout the offices, through the world, and through the clients, and to other institutions. Yeah, so we enhance collaboration with digitization. And even it's very technical digitization, we want to have our communic communication as personal as possible. And this is why it's great that you are here, because we have a personal communication. Because only personal communication you know, builds trust in the end. And that's why it's so important yeah, that we meet each other more and more again, yeah, now hopefully um, overcoming COVID. Yeah, uh, and um, at Rotary, yeah, you probably know Rotary, this, uh, uh, f um, uh, now how you say, clubs and foundation. Th there's an easy sentence, yeah, you cannot be friend with an empty chair. That's why they have a duty to be present at the meetings. You cannot be a friend or cannot have a friend with an empty chair. That's so easy. Because people are social beings, you know, and this why it's, we are very social and we are looking for social, you know, um, not distancing, but being close to each other. And certainly we have won a lot of prizes, not, over in, not only in Germany, but also in other countries, uh, that we are probably the most digital company in our branch, and this is what drives us. Yeah, we understand digitization really as a key success factor and the, the transforming of Rödel and Partner went in the end in three phases. Yeah, so the first phase was when we started in 2012 yeah, was to build the Rödel and Partner private cloud that meant to consolidate the existing very decentral and in part in parts also old IT infrastructure into a new consolidated structure. Yeah, so that means yeah, our active directories have, to be, have been consolidated, yeah, single sign-on as much as possible. Yeah, um, what is this? Workplace management, yeah, that we have the most modern computers yeah, um, dealing with very, really good software products. And we built our service unit, Global Digital Services. And this already shows you the, the way we are thinking. We are not thinking in IT. In former times, this was called the IT of Rödel Partner. But it's not about IT. IT is just a, a tool, you know. It's about digital services. This is what's important. Yeah, then the second phase was that we launched the first digital services since 2014. Yeah, in all those professional service areas, audit, tax, legal, but also in our service units. Yeah, and since 2017, yeah, we are in the real cloud readiness and transformation phases with hybrid cloud applications. And this is really what makes us very proud yeah, that whenever we see a new business coming up, um, we are checking it. And um, in some cases, we are able to build applications for clients yeah, to, to use data or to overcome, um, let's say, new legislation challenges within one or two weeks, yeah, really fast. And this, why business is so important. You have to be fast. Uh, fast solutions uh, to deliver, to help people to do a better, better job. We invested a lot of money without SAP, which we parallelly brought into Rydl and Partner. Yeah, you know SAP, yeah, the bookkeeping and accounting software, yeah, which is um, very successful, this company. And all big firms throughout the world are actually more or less using SAP. 
We said yeah, that digital competence is a key success driver for Rödel and Partner. Yeah, this is why yeah, we have this three sheet uh, strategic alignment. In every course, we do it at Rödel and Partner when we train young people, when we have our new partners network, yeah, when we promote people to be senior associates, associate partners. The digital part is always a key content element of all our um, yeah, qualifications and our training courses. Yeah. Um, that means we also build digital know-how. Yeah. We have a worldwide unique and seamless global infra IT infrastructure. We are compliant, as I tell you, it's very important to be compliant. Yeah. And we can perfectly collaborate with you, the students, with business partners, but also within the firm. Yeah, and this means yeah, we have a strategic important advantage and an optimal basis for the further development of the firm. And to bring it all together, you know, it's about digital maturity. Yeah, it's a core business aspect. But the most important thing is yeah, digitization and digital transformation is only successful when people support it. It's all here about your attitude and your will and your, let's say, your capability to change. And this is probably one of the also most important messages, uh, that daily life, not only business life, but daily life in our age is a thing and a matter about changing capabilities. Uh, we have to be ready for change, we have to accept change, and we have to live change. Yeah. And this digital customer competence yeah, must be visible. Yeah, so we use it, we consult it, and the best thing is you have a client fit. Yeah, that means our digital clients who are also looking for a very good transformation have in Rödel and Partner the right partner yeah, for their business and transformation aspects. And certainly IT is very relevant. As you know, when you look at the figures, uh, Brazil over here yeah, is in position number nine of the 10 most important IT markets in the world. Yeah, certainly US is number one. Yeah, and then you see China, India, Japan, Australia, yeah, France, Germany, UK, yeah, and Canada. But Brazil has a relevant position. Yeah? That means um, you are not a third world country. Yeah? You are a premier player in IT in the world yeah? from market perspective. And if you check it a little bit closer, yeah, you see that um, here's Brazil. It's still a, l a little bit too much into, into you know, hardware because applications and software are getting more and more important. You see in America, the trend is already a little bit different. Yeah, hardware is not the dominating factor but it's more the, the service and the software. And here, Brazil will go the same, the same way. Yeah, China is totally different. They still have this very strong hardware section. Yeah, but in IT, I think the relevant role model is the US. Yeah, so applications and software will dominate also in Brazil in, a, in the near future. Yeah, we are very much convinced about that. Yeah, and if you look at LATAM, yeah, number one market, Brazil. So it's good to be here. It's good to deal with this stuff. Yeah, and I'm very, very happy and a great compliment to Mackenzie University, yeah, not only here in this accounting course, yeah, that you see the relevance of digitization and try to bridge yeah, the theoretical knowledge yeah, you need and the practical use, yeah, like for us in our business and for your career, for your professional career. Yeah, and you see it that software and services are um, playing an even stronger position, that's yeah, what I said. Yeah, and if I want to come to a conclusion, and we are right on time, yeah, I would say it's four messages I want to bring to you. Yeah, the first is, Everything what can be will be digitized. That's the way it is. 
we have to accept this. Yeah? But yeah, digitization means change. Yeah? And otherwise, we only digitize the status quo. So whenever we talk about digitalization, we have to rethink whether the processes which are behind that are correct or could be improved. Yeah? That's very important. And the next thing is the people are the most important success factor for a successful trans transformation. And this is why we have to understand and drive digitization yeah, based on an attitude of accepting and promoting change. Yeah? We decide whether digitalization will be successful or not. And you decided, you are young people, yeah? you are building your career, you are building the fundamentals for your professional career. And I really want to encourage you yeah, to always think about how all the stuff is, what you are learning, yeah, and, and um, let's say, putting into your brains yeah, is interconnected and related to digitization and always try to think ahead. Yeah, and I can tell you, many, many people don't understand that. They cannot think ahead. They even cannot yeah, um, keep the pace yeah, that others uh, bring into the world. Also, keeping pace is already difficult, but try to think ahead is even more difficult. But you are young talents, yeah, and Philip and their colleagues told me that you are outstanding young talents, so really use your brain Use your experiences, think ahead, yeah, and be part of this really very, very exciting process. Yeah? And accounting 4.0, the course we are sharing here together, yeah, McKinsey and the business partners, and we as Rödelum Partner are one of the initiating partners. Yeah? Um, we are really fascinated from this program yeah, um, for us, and for you it's a lighthouse project, yeah, you can be sure. Yeah? Uh, and it's a lighthouse project how to deal with with, let's say, the interconnection of accounting and auditing, understanding of, of data and processes and digitalization. And so I think you lay a really magnificent, a wonderful foundation yeah, for a really professional career. Yeah, and so I really want to thank you very much that you bring in your talent, yeah, that you are eager to, to study, yeah, uh, it's worth it, I can tell you. You are privileged to have this chance here at this wonderful university. Yeah, you can address us and other business partners. Yeah, we, are, we are here to help you. Certainly, we would be grateful yeah, to, if you also probably would join one day our firm and bring in your know-how, your drive, your encouragement, everything. Yeah, but this is not the main reason for us. The main reason is yeah, that we really want to help yeah, to, yeah, to build a better future, yeah, and especially to help young talents to grow their yeah, business and professional career. So I hope you understood me quite well. So it's a kind of Franklish I'm talking, you know, my Franconian dialect in combination with English. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you for taking time, and whatever you have on questions or whatever, you can always talk to Thomas, to Philip, or certainly also to me, and thank you very much, and lots of success, and all the best for your career. Martin, uh, we have uh, 50 more minutes until the professors arrive. So if you like, uh, we can bridge with opening the, the, some questions from the students. Is it okay? So, so we were so much good in time. We had some buffer time. But who wants to ask questions? I mean, you have a once in a life, uh, uh, lifetime chance now to ask whatever you want to ask. <laughs> I think Good it's not day. only a matter of questioning, but also, you know, sure. what do you think is, is, are you, let's say, do you think the same way we see what's going on outside and with digitization, or do you think um, there are other aspects which are very important? So what do you think? What do you think is the importance of digitization for your career? Is it something you see positive? Is it something you say, okay, I have to do it because it's just part of it, or is it annoying? <laughs> I don't know. 
Just let us know yeah, how you think about it. Can you use the microphone, please? Philip has it, then it's easier for us to understand you. Uh, I think we kind of don't mind it because, as you said before, we already we were born in this generation, and it's something natural to us to have things uh, the way they are now, digitalized, and we never experienced something different, so we can't really say what uh, if it's beneficial or negative. May I ask you one question? Yes, you personally, please. but if you don't want to answer, it's no problem. But it's, it's not you know, about testing, you just to get a kind of impression. Are you able to program an algorithm? No. Okay. A friend of mine said, you understand digitization as soon as you're able to program at least one algorithm. I just say this, you know, it's, we, we, we want to discuss, yeah? Um, and algorithms, you know, and certainly dealing with data and processing and machine learning and all this stuff, it's certainly one important aspect. I don't think that's the most prominent one, but you see how far this, you know, this goes. <laughs> yes. But you're to write, you're digital natives. Okay. I'm a digital immigrant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I have a question about uh, how much important is the statistics into working with BPO and how much that inspires you to keep uh, evolving inside the digitalization process? <laughs> a very smart question. <laughs> I would answer it this way. At the moment, dealing with financial data is something which has a high potential to be very much digitized. And then certainly, um, once it's digitized in a digital format, all those mathematical add-ons, yeah, like statistics, algorithms, automation aspects come into play. Yeah, and so it's important. Yeah. But you don't have to be a statistic professor okay. yeah, to deal with, that, with it. Yeah? But you have to understand and accept. Yeah? This is why I was asking, yeah, who of you can program an algorithm? Because probably, if you, if you like, it, it's not that difficult. Yeah? Take a little time on the weekend, yeah? try to make a little read in, in, this, in how to program an algorithm. And it, you will see it's not that difficult. And probably it will encourage you yeah, to use yeah, the one or other statistic routine yeah, to support your work. Yeah. And this is something we're also discussing right now in the office, you know, with automation yeah, of some, yeah, let's say, manual work, because in the end, you know, manual work is boring. Yeah, to understand what's going on and to use information and to process it and to especially to see the conclusions out of information, the results, this is much more important. And so statistics is certainly a, a relevant part of it. Okay. Thank but I also you. <laughs> hate, but when I was studying, I hated statistics. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Gabriel. Who else? Ladies. So as you see, we have a high rate of ladies also in the program. Yeah, it's a nice uh, ratio here. So be brave, uh, Liliani. Professor. As they don't talk. Uh, I, I thank you very much, Martin, for your presentation because I think it's motivating uh, for the students. And uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it's real. Everything that we are talking about in our classes and everything that we are discussing in all the, 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 uh, the talks that we have with the professors are real, and uh, he is presenting that it's happening in the companies. So uh, I, I am motivating because <laughs> I know that what we are, we are building is very important to them, and it's, it's a, a developing of a career for all of these students, and uh, I think they are uh, motivated because of that. 
And I think we are building a, a really good and a really uh, important formation from them. In, in accounting, that is a, a course that I love and a profession that I love. And I'm, I'm sure that they are uh, building a real, a real great career. So thank you, Martin, for your speech. But you're absolutely right. Thank you very thank much, you, uh, because it's really it's a mixture between the theoretical approach and the challenges, you know, what's going on, uh, and the practical bridge into reality, you know, and into business. And I think we really do this here very, very well, and that everybody of this class really benefits from that, you know, the academic challenge, but also how to use it yeah, then in, in real time, yeah, in, in real life, yeah, going out for business and earning money. Absolutely. And you know, one of the successful things yeah, uh, for what Germany is pretty prominent is um, that on many universities in Germany you have this practical access also, you know, that you have a high level theoretical approach, you know, challenging, but also always try to bring in <coughs> the practical side, you know, that, you know, whether it's for engineering or whether it's, you know, for mathematics or physics or whatever, so that always, you know, see, hey, for what do I learn all this stuff, yeah, and how can I use it, yeah, once I'm out of university, I don't want to become a professor, not everybody will be a professor, yeah. Okay, bef bef before we go to the last uh, milestone, a picture with Martin Wambach, with everybody, yeah. Um, let me ask you one last question. We have two more minutes, yeah, until the professors come. So, you are the Wirecard special investigator. <laughs> Is Wirecard the Enron for Arthur, like Enron was for Arthur Anderson? Is that the, let's say, the Enron for Ernst Young? Yeah, first, I don't know whether you know the Wirecard case, what happened in Germany. Who of you is aware of what Wirecard is or was? Do you know about this uh, scandal, this financial scandal? Okay, I'll give you a short briefing. Yeah? Wirecard uh, is a payment provider, or was a payment provider, and it was a very successful company, and within a few years, within 15 years, it came from nothing into the most prominent stock market league, yeah, the so-called DAX 30. Yeah, the DAX 30 means it's the 30, it's, it was one of the 30 biggest companies in Germany listed at the stock market. So this is very prominent, yeah, very relevant. And then, within three days, Wirecard collapsed. And the damage is about 15 billion US dollar 15 billion, not million, billion US dollar, yeah, and uh, lots of other effects, and the, and the reliability of the German stock market was really uh, shattered, yeah, and everybody was asking how something like this could happen, yeah, that one of the most prominent companies in Germany, one of the fastest growing companies in Germany can collapse within three days. And one of the reasons why it collapsed was that EY couldn't deliver the audit opinion in the end. Uh, it was in, in 2020, March 2020, and they couldn't deliver it because they realized that they're missing 1.9 billion dollars liquidity. So over all the years, you know, they have audited the financial statements and gave a qualified opinion without any restrictions that the financial statements were reflecting the true yeah, and overall right financial and um, economic situation of Wirecard and then there was doubt, a lot of doubt coming up yeah, and then KPMG was um, elected as a special investigator um, to have a look on what's going on and then EY had to wait for their audit report and in the end they didn't deliver it because one point billion US dollar were missing in liquidity but it was in the balance sheet. So um, this case yeah, was a really a shocking event, this scandal. And the German parliament also um, was very much interested because Chancellor Merkel, yeah, um, our former chancellor, even 
yeah, promoted Wirecard in China. Yeah, lots of prominent politicians yeah, uh, were somehow involved in promoting Wirecard and, and its rise of the company. Yeah, the German um, um, financial markets uh, agency who surveys uh, the stock market and everything yeah, was asked, why didn't you see that something is going wrong? And certainly the auditors, yeah, the auditors were EY, Ernst & Young, also were asked, hey, how the hell could this happen? Yeah, that you audit financial statements yeah, and you give a qualified opinion and in the end we are missing 1.9 billion liquidity. So the German parliament um, built, it, built an investive, investigative committee and this investigative committee elected me to check on the work of EY. Yeah? And this was a pretty prominent work. So for many weeks, I was probably the most known auditor yeah, in Germany and throughout Europe because I was investigating what the colleagues of EY have been doing there. And um, I don't want to mention the name EY uh, here anymore because it's not about EY. Yeah? It's about uh, what happened. And certainly we have to be humble and very professional in, in looking at that. But um, what we can say since my report, who was form which was formerly not, um, not for the public, was released by a German newspaper about eight, uh, yeah, about eight, 10 weeks ago. So everybody can read the report, which I have been writing with my colleagues. It is really a, a big problem because the audit work was, I would say, not very well performed. And uh, now the courts of Germany uh, starting to, yeah, to check and to, to work up this case um, to see whether EY did a, by chance a bad job or whether it was by, um, how do I say, by mind, you know, um, done purposely. And if it was done purposely, I don't want to, I cannot qualify that. Um, then it will be bad for the firm because then they have an unlimited reliability, financial reliability. If it was by chance, the liability of the firm is restricted to 4 million euros, so that's pretty easy because the insurance companies will cover that. But if it was on purpose that they uh, did wrong financial statements here, wrong qualified opinions, then it will be really a mess for the firm. They already suffered a lot in Germany. Uh, that. They lost a lot of clients. And the bad thing is, you know, since I'm in the, in the board of the German Auditors Association, is that the whole profession really um, got a big reputation loss. Because the public was asking, uh, how could an auditor be able not to see that we miss a lot of money? Yeah? And so this case is not yet over. But it was a very prominent work, and hopefully uh, um, EY will not diminish, yeah, like Arthur Anderson um, just went off the market in, in, as a case, so as a result of the Enron crisis. But we will see. It's getting close. But for the market, it wouldn't be good. Yeah, and I really pressed thumbs yeah, that it was a single case of just bad work and not a systematic problem of the company. But if you want to have a look on it, there's also a lot of in English uh, information about Wirecard in, in the internet. Yeah? So you don't have to be fluent in German. You also can read a lot in English and other languages about the Wirecard case, which is probably the most prominent financial statement scandal throughout the world within the last, let's say, five years. Great, Martin. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so first of all, uh, before we do the picture, maybe Palmas Praelet, huh? Over there. <laughs> Thanks so much, Martin, to share uh, so much insights with us. Uh, so we would like to make now with this most prominent German auditor a picture. Yeah? And uh, the future generations of accountants and auditors, please, everybody, let's, let's make a nice picture. We can take with mask on. I think that should be fine. Uh, Liliani. Uh, you have the cameraman, right? So, great. Where you want to do it? Here, here in the. Perfect. 